Hello and welcome to our next Exchange Server class. Today we will talk about SAN Digital Certificates. It is the first thing to set up after you've installed Exchange Server. Without such certificate, users will always receive some kind of a warnings, warning messages saying that our server is potentially unsafe. So one of the first things that we want to do to set up such certificate for our server. This class was created for you by Jonathan Rausen and translated by Pavel Shostak. First, let's discuss a very small network with a single server, and this server got everything on it. The main controller and all the components of Exchange Server, mailbox, client and hub. So, we have only one server. Perhaps we do not have money to buy the second server, perhaps we just do not need it because we have a small network for a small company. Anyway, we will do it on a single virtual machine. For our current purposes, it doesn't matter if we deal with one computer or we deal with many computers. So, we have just installed our Exchange server and now we got to handle the certificates for it. Users that connect to our server from within the network will use the inner network name for the server and should be presented a certificate for this inner server name. On the other hand, anyone who wants to access our server from outside of our network will use outer server name and we will need to present uh, this user the security certificate for this outer user name, like here. So now we got to have two certificates for two server names. Of course, we do not want to do it. Perhaps we can include two names in one certificate Classic certificates cannot do it. However, it can be done using SAN certificates. SAN certificate got a special field in it called alternative names. This field includes all the alternative names for your server included in the certificate. Actually, because of this field, the whole certificate is called SAN certificate. SAN stands for subject alternative names. Anyway, why these names are so important? Um, let's try to connect to some website with a certificate. I don't know, some bank website. Um, what browser are we using? Firefox. Uh, let's use Explorer. It is more obvious in Explorer. So let's connect to a website with a certificate and let's take a look at this certificate. See here, field issued to. This name should match with the name in your browser, like in our case here. If the names do not match, you will see a red warning. Let's see this warning. Um, let's use IP address instead of URL. That will give us warning. Now, wait a second. Uh -huh. Here it is. So, why do we get this warning? Because the name on the certificate here, Rishon Practicum, doesn't match with the name that we used to connect to server. By the way, this warning will be given not only by a web browser, but also by Outlook. And they try to tell us that, well, perhaps this certificate was stolen and perhaps someone is trying to impersonate Rishon Practicum. So it is absolutely necessary to have certificate for all the names that can potentially be used by users to connect to our server. So let's go and make a certificate with two names in it. Lucky for us, Exchange 2010 got a graphic user interface. It wasn't there in 2007. So there in Exchange 2007 we had to write all the commands manually. Some people like command typing and all kind of command driven user interfaces, but I'm not the one of them. So, add roles, we tell our server that now it is a DC server and exchange server and also CA server providing certificate services. Also, the certificate can be requested through the web access through the IS server. 
there will be like a small website on our IS server that can issue certificates. Right now we don't want to talk about managing CA server, so we will just use default settings. So next, 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 install. If you want to know more about digital certificates and you need to know more about digital certificates, you can find a lot of information on our website www.practicu.com Right now on your screen you can see a Hebrew version of our website but by the time you will be watching this video there will be an English version of it. Here's a lot of classes about different aspects of digital certificates and you need to know it all. I guess by now the installation of CA server is finished and we can request our certificate. So let's go to roles, certificate services, CA and here we can see the list of certificates issued so far. Well, there are none obviously. Let's start Exchange 2010 and ask for digital certificate with two names in it. In fact, we will need more than two names. We will need two more autodiscover names. The names will be autodiscover.practicu.com for external users and autodiscover.practicu.local for internal users. Autodiscover is a very useful feature introduced, it seems to me, in Exchange 2007. And it is so convenient that almost mandatory. Let's find here Outlook icon and click it with a control key. If you click it without control key, it will look like this. And with a control key, we will have right now two additional options. Here they are. This test email auto configuration is an option provided to us by AutoDiscover feature. What it does? It connects to the server, it reads all the configurations and automatically configures Outlook. Before this feature was introduced, system administrator had to spend a lot of time explaining each user how to configure Outlook at home. Naturally, a lot of users want to receive their office emails at home, so AutoDiscover feature saved system administrators a lot of trouble. So, the only thing that user got to do is to choose this test email auto configuration option, enter here email address and password, and the rest will be done automatically. Outlook will be configured automatically, extremely convenient. That is, of course, if auto discover is enabled and correctly configured. Usually, it's the case. Uh, actually, before going further, let me show you this auto discover. It's just a folder inside our IS server. Let's find it. So here we are. Wait a second, sites. And here we've got it. Auto discover folder. Here it is. So users connect to that folder from their home computers and they read this file how to discover XML. This file got all the information needed to automatically set up Outlook, but still this file doesn't have any kind of a security sensitive information. So no password, no login information. In other words, this service doesn't pose any security threat. By the way, what else have we got here? You can see Surf SRV. This is what we have installed, because uh, also we have installed CA server and using this CERT SRV, CA server will request certificates. Since everything is installed right now, let's request certificate for our server. So let's go to Exchange Management Console and let's go to Server Configuration. Why Server Configuration? Why not Organization Configuration? Well, simply because we need certificate for server, not for the whole organization, but for specific server. So, server configuration. 
takes some time to load. Okay. <laughs> Finally. So here we are, server configuration. Let's right click it. And here, new exchange certificate. Let's choose it. Now it will ask us for the name of the certificate. This is our own inner name. We can choose any. This is just for our administration purposes. Nothing else. So let's choose Practic Use Send Certificate. Why not? Here it asks us if we want to use wildcard option, if we want to automatically include subdomains in our certificate. I don't like it because it leaves some room for errors. So let's set up our certificate. Here we say that we want to use this certificate for web application. This is the internal name and this is the external name. So everybody connecting from internet will use this name. Emails stem co il. And this is the internal name of the domain. Uh, why I check both boxes? Because I want both names uh, inserted in our certificate. Also, we must uncheck this box because we will not use Active Sync. Also, here it is possible to choose if we want to use this certificate for Auto Discover. Of course, we want to use it. It can be done here. That's Auto Discover name. Now, next. Using the information that we have provided, the program generates the list of names to be included in our certificate. The first name here in bold font. This is the main name of our certificate. It is called common name. The second name is an auto discover version of our inner internal name. Then there is an external name of the server and internal name of the server. You can see that right now we have internal server name and its auto discover version. But we do not have how to discover version for external name. Let's edit manually.